Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. Today we are doing episode 81, and we will be talking about fun games and different ways to get students engaged in your classrooms. So we're bringing a fresh teacher's edition right off the press and to your headphones right now. So we're looking forward to it. I'm curious to hear what Jared has to say in terms of uh, some fun things and games he liked as a student. And uh, I'm going to share some of my favorite uh, games and also a few tips how to get some of those students who might be a little shy or quiet um, to be more involved in your classes. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. And I'm sure there will also be some ways that uh, this pod will also connect in terms of um, how to get people engaged in general as well. So it should be fun and we're looking forward to it. Without further ado, my co-host, my good friend, Jared, what's going on, Jared? Rule number one for getting people engaged, assign the untranslatable podcast and they will learn so much about language, culture, travel, untranslatable phrases. Also, they should follow us on Instagram, untranslatable podcast, Twitter, untranslatable one, the number one. Uh, you can send us, oh, there I post songs of the pod, the episode, and you can send me untranslatables. I'm now not fully relegating that to email. You can now officially do it on Twitter, fine. <laughs> um, I know that's what was stopping everyone before. Or you can email us on translatablepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, or ooh, spread a little love with five star reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. Um, yeah, Untranslatable Podcast is the best way to learn everything you need to know. So, we uh, here at the Untranslatable Podcast, we like to talk about, you know, uh, slang, untranslatables, and stuff. I found a list of 2019's. Most annoying slang terms. Oh, yes. I'm excited. Uh, there's 20 of them. I'll just go through them, and we'll get your opinion on them. Let's do it. Number one. Uh, we'll start at that. Well, number 20 is trill. T-R-I-L-L. I don't know if people were still saying trill. What What does that even mean? I don't know that one. Trill, trill is like, that's trill. You know, like, I think it's like dope, essentially. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Because, see, for, for me as a musician, I think of, like, a trill, like a, yeah, no. you know. No, you're a nerd. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> you're not using these cool, annoying slang terms. 19 is not snack. Not yet. Snack? Yeah. With two Cs? No. <laughs> with, a, with a CK. I know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know how that one would be used? Yeah, it's like a, like a, like you're looking like a snack, right? There you go. There you go. Parada. Yeah. Uh, 18 is fam. Okay, I use that think, one once in a while. Do you th- uh, yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, I don't really. Don I don't know if I that do. One a lot. He does use that a lot. It doesn't bother me though, because uh, I think we are, uh, you know, family. <laughs> 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 uh, Seventeen, sp- uh, spill the tea. That's definitely uh, used a lot on uh, the socials on Twitter. That's a popular one. Is that one on the black Twitter universe quite a bit? For sure, for sure. That's where it originated. No, sp- spill I think, the, I think spill maybe, the tease it. Go ahead. Oh, I, 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 I just want to say it did originate on black Twitter, but I think gay people might say it originated in their circle on, on the Twitters. Uh-huh. But, okay. So I'm not going to get in between that okay. argument. I'm okay. going to give them both some props. <laughs> Good call. And so spill, spill the tea, is that, so is that like spill the beans? What exactly is that? Spill the tea is kind of like giving the gossip. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, sixteen lit. That one I I yep. would probably agree with. Yep. Fifteen thirsty. That one I'd probably agree with too. Yep. Uh, th- you want to explain thirsty? Sure. I mean, thirsty is is not that you uh are parched or you you have a well you do have a thirst to quench, but it has nothing to do with uh well it doesn't necessarily have anything <laughs> to do with liquids. But if you're thirsty, it means you're like. I don't know if you would say desperate, but like you're trying to trying to get some. I would probably to, say desperate. Like you're trying yeah. too hard to like like to get yeah to get someone. Yeah. Uh, fourteen peeped. What is it, peeped? Like I peeped that. Uh, it's just like I like. Did you, you peep that new? Did you peep that new Audi R eight? I don't know. It's like so. Did, did you, you like check that? it out? Yeah. Did you see that okay. new? Yeah. Turn up, turnt. Yeah. Turnt. That's, that's I'd agree with one. that. Clap back. I, that's a big one on the socials. I uh, feel like that one's been around longer than 2019, though. Oh, for sure. I think a lot of these have. That, uh, that's all of these true. Have. 
When I think of clapback, I think of all the funny, like Thanksgiving clapback memes. Where oh it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it's like, uh, you know, your your Aunt Carol or Sharon or whatever. She's like, uh, what do they say? Like, oh why yeah, you on you, your, oh uh, go ahead. Why go you, ahead. why are you on your uh, why are you uh, on your third wine? Why are you on your third marriage on Cheryl? <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> Slipping on gator piss. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good um, clap back right there. Uh, Eleven totes. People, I don't even know if people still use totes. Totes Ten, seems really old to me. It is very old. Ten uh, SMH. I don't know Shaking if that's overused, but it's definitely used a lot. I'll put Do it. Do you down. use it? <laughs> no, I don't. Me either. But it's definitely used a lot. Uh, nine throw shade. Uh, yeah, that's probably overused. Eight uh, TFW. Do you want to break that one down? TF. What, what does that mean? I've seen it before on social media. I don't actually know what it means. Imagine a picture of. Um, uh, um, imagine a picture of. Um, I'm trying to think of a popular meme. Uh, imagine a picture of um, you know that meme where it's the guy looking and there's the question marks around. Yeah, his, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, imagine um, so say say TFW, you're at a party, and someone says uh, the Earth is definitely flat. Okay. And you have is it that like meme of the person is it like, like that what? time when. What does that stand for, though? The TFW. Well, that time when is clearly not what TFW well, obviously. would sleep. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Uh, I mean, you're very close. I'm surprised how little you know. I didn't know you didn't know what it was at all. Uh, that feeling when. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Inter- I've seen it hundreds of times, and I've never just... I've always just been, all right, well, whatever. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right, learn something every day. <laughs> That's right. That's why we're here at the Untraceable Podcast. Right. <laughs> uh, seven is Stussy. I've never heard anyone say Stussy, but it's fun to say. Stussy. I, I don't know. I also sounds, don't know what that one I is. Feel like, I feel like we need like a double explicit for a word that I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, six is Fleek. Yeah, I agree with yep. that one. Okay. Five sure. is Ghost. Um, I mean, that's a legitimate term. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> if you're going to ghost it, maybe people are overusing what they consider ghosting. Like, you know, you talk to someone once and you never talk to him again and they consider that getting ghosted. Where it's like, I mean, you haven't, you never really even established anything there. I don't right. know. I'm not I, in I, these I'd agree with that. I, and can, can I explain ghosting a little bit more? Just so sure. our listeners out there. You would know um, very well what that means. <laughs> I don't What's know that supposed I, to mean? <laughs> Slipping on gator. Pits. I don't know why I did so, that. That's mean. <laughs> uh, so, so ghosting is basically when, um, yeah, when you are talking to somebody. Generally, well, I, I guess I usually associate it with somebody you're kind of like interested in, like in a romantic sense, I guess, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then, like maybe they lose interest or you lose interest, and instead of doing the respectable, honorable thing and just being like, "Look, changing I'm, your I, number." I don't, I don't, you know, feel the same way as you. You just, you just Killing stop them. responding. Just, oh, oh. <laughs> you disappear like a ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, four Gucci. Yeah, I agree with that one. Yep. What's Gucci? What's Ooh. Gucci? That's Gucci. Don actually says that sometimes. It doesn't bother yeah. me when he says it. But uh, now that I hear it in a vacuum like this, I'm like, uh, we need to stop. Right. I, I jokingly will use that sometimes if I want to like. If I'm with like some of my Czech friends, I'll be like, "Yeah, what's Gucci?" And they're like, "What? Huh? What?" It's always kind of <laughs> fun one to toss in there. Uh, three hangry. Okay. Uh, all right, all right. You That's know, respectable. I don't, I, I don't. At least I don't. I don't really venture in the areas of social media where p- people are saying hangry a lot. That's not a black Twitter term. That's fair. Two bay. Yeah, that's probably overused. I mean, yeah. pr- I mean, what's overused though? What do you consider overused? Because bay, once again, at least kind of kind of has some legitimacy to the term yeah i think yeah and, and that's uh, before all else well, well, although right no no Bang. oh my god jesus what? christ <laughs> <laughs> jared i'm getting old I'm, I'm out of touch with all these new kid slang terms bay is Isn't not it before all else bay, bay is not i don't think bay is an acronym is it i thought that's what, what what do you think it is i didn't know it was an acronym i thought you just meant like She's my bay, or like. Well, well, yeah, but I think that means like she comes. I'm pretty sure it means before all else. I, I mean, maybe you could. Uh, I, okay, maybe or before anyone else. See, before anyone else. Here I'm uh, googling I've, it. I, but I feel like right sure. Here, 
Right here, Urban Dictionary says, Bay is an acronym. We know Urban Dictionary is the most credible source I, 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 for I, I, all I, I, slang terms. Okay, go ahead. Um, Bay, Urban Dictionary says, is an acronym that stands for before anyone else. Then they also say, or a shortened term of baby or babe, another word that's for what sweetie. I think we're, that's where I think it right. really comes from, is a shortened term for baby or babe. Right. Although, why not just say babe? Like, like, I don't say it, either. I, 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 I've, I'm very uncomfortable with terms of endearment like okay. that. Okay, <laughs> it's funny. I used to I used to call my ex babe, right? Uh huh. And and I did it so much that now when I type in "hey" on my phone, depending on the app I use, "babe" is one of the words that pops up. Mm. I haven't used that word in months. No, I feel a little less special, so, but okay. Uh, right. Let's move All right. On I'll to... start calling you Bay. But wait, there's one other thing. This is related to uh, our our love for languages here. Did you know, Jared? Bay is also. Uh, the word for poop in Danish. <laughs> I did not know that. There you so go. There you go. A little early untranslatable <laughs> for everybody out there. Uh, that's not an untranslatable. That's just a word. That's just a translation. That's true. One day, Chad will understand what the namesake of this podcast actually <laughs> means. You always do that. <laughs> maybe, maybe after a hundred episodes or so, we'll see. Oh my god. It's shocking to me how little you know about this podcast. I remember showing you a video <laughs> of the podcast not three weeks ago, and you're like, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, that, this has been going on for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's number one? It's uh, an acronym. It's an acronym. I'll give you, I'll just throw out some names. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to throw out some names. Okay. LeBron James. Goat. Goat. Wow, damn. <laughs> Greatest of all time, goat. That was an easy one. Uh, I, was, I had more examples ready, but you were that was too quick. <laughs> I, was, I was excited. I was going to say Tom Brady next. Just to, Okay. Uh, Fair but, enough. Uh, People do call him the goat. Although, I don't know if it's because I'm a 90s kid, Jared, but in my opinion, Jordan will always be the goat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that was obviously going to be an example as well, but you, right. you were quick on the draw too, there. That's right. Uh, Gotta make yeah. up for something since I don't know anything about our own podcast, you know. And I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. What's uh, what's TFW again, by the way? <laughs> oh crap! Really? Uh, that feeling when? That there feeling when? There we go. There we go. Parada. Uh, yeah, goat. And I would agree. I think goat is probably overused. Everyone's yeah. the goat nowadays. Right. Which just and means nobody's everyone... the goat anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Those are yeah. the top twenty most annoying slang terms, not in twenty nineteen, but you know, as in a, general, like, that right. people are using today. That's a that's a funny list. I'm surprised Yeet wasn't on that list. What's Yeet? I've heard it, but I don't yeet's know. Yeet's like it is. a meme thing. I think it just means like when you're like throwing something, when you're like Yeet. What what what, what would you be throwing on 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 a meme? Well, no, I think like the, I think the, the, I think the, the, the meme is, um, yeah, it's a way to express excitement. There you go. Okay. And this actually came all the way back in 2008. Yeet is a simply a way to express excitement, especially using basketball when someone has shot a three pointer, um, or used in a colorful yet less wholesome context. Aha. Uh -huh. As one ejaculates. <laughs> Chad, this is according I could, yeah. to Urban yeah, That was so funny to witness. By the way, watch us on YouTube <laughs> to see the moment when Chad regretted that he continued reading that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Um, okay. Yeet. I've never, I mean, th yeah, the second one actually makes more sense to me than the first one. <laughs> right. Right. Um, oh, man. Okay, well, that's Crazy. that's the super number one worst uh, slang that I've heard. <laughs> Most definitely. I would agree with you. Today. Right. <laughs> definitely. Uh, you were in Prague last week, or this weekend, weren't you, last weekend? I was. I was. Actually, the last two weekends, and I have to tell you, man, although I love Prague, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to need to take a little break from it and maybe chill in Do you think you're exhausting its, its options? I wouldn't say exhausting its options. It's just, uh, well, one, I always go there and spend too much money. Number mm. one. Number two, um, I just need to relax and chill at home, I think, next weekend. Need a little R&R. &R. Yeah. What does that actually stand for? I think rest and relaxation. Okay. Okay. I've heard that a lot, and I always kind of thought I knew, but I'm like, uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, me too. Right. Chill out. Hey, that was Research that was and with, development? Uh... No, that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> that was me with a uh, uh, TFW. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, although R and R, I think, is technically a military term. Is it like really? When, like, I think it's for like military people that go on leave for a certain amount of time. Okay. Uh, they call it R and R. Okay. I think I heard it first, maybe on the on the uh, show The Office. Mm. I think it was one of the one of the first times I ever heard it, but I, okay. I could be wrong. But yeah, so I was in Prague, and um, I'm going to give you a little early teaser, uh, and give our listeners an early teaser. I uh, went to a concert with my friends Ravi and Logan. So shout out to both of them. A little early shout out. Oh, these are new people. Who are who are these new people? Um, they're also guys. David's are... the only one that you're you've ever mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so so Ravi is a uh, really awesome music composer. And also, I would say an overall Renaissance man, and he also plays guitar as well. Uh-huh. And then Logan is a photographer, and they're also um, they're also in my program. They're obviously not English teachers, but they uh, they work uh, at some universities in Prague, and uh, and that's how I met them. And they're awesome dudes. Uh, we went to this really cool place called Dvakohoti, which is Czech for uh, two roosters or two cocks, um, and they have really that should that should have been the name of our show. Devako Hoti? Yeah. Uh, I think they might have the copyright on that one. But uh but yeah. And so we got really, really good beer there. Uh and they they make a special beer there called um, oh, shoot, what is it called? I'm gonna remember that one. Yeah. It's called um I think it's uh Misny uh Lejac, uh which just means like a like local um lager. Yeah, local mm-hmm. lager. Um, and it's and you can only get it there. But it, I had a couple of them. It was fantastic. Um, back to our old beer review days, I would say it was definitely rank highly on our review scale and uh, definitely very smooth. Okay. And then after that, though, we went to a they, concert. Is it their beer that that yeah. place brews it? Yeah, uh, they okay. brew it right there. So I mean, you know, from from where they brew it to the tap, that's got to be less than twenty feet. Do they do they serve it with this sort of pilsner style he- head on it? No, not really. Okay. There's a little bit of head on there, but not nearly as much as on a on a Pilsner. We we follow Pilsner Requill on our Untranslatable podcast Instagram, and I I I still will like stop at those pictures and just be like, oh, I miss that. Right. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> they they just always have just these perfectly poured beers, and I'm like, oh, that was a good time. <laughs> right. We should do an episode at the end of things I'll miss about the Czech Republic. That might be kind of fun. Oh yeah, that's that a good would be one. Kind of fun. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so anyways, so I was in Prague and I was hanging out. Well, first of all, I went there um, to hang out with uh, our previous guest, uh, Annabelle, mm-hmm. and then her friend, Steve, uh, who's also from Michigan. So it was cool hanging out with a fellow Michigander. And, and we had a great time him? on Friday. I, I didn't know him before. Oh, no, because he actually, he actually lives in Germany and that's oh, how they know each other. So they're friends, met him, uh, stayed with German? them. Uh, a little bit, yeah. It was mm-hmm. funny when we took the, when we took the Uber home. Late at night, after uh, getting some uh, drunchies at KFC, um, he was speaking some, for some reason. He was speaking some German in the in the cab, and I'm like, I, at first I was like, what, "What? What are you doing? They don't. This guy's this guy's not even Czech. He's Armenian. Why? Why are you speaking German?" <laughs> but uh, it was a great time. And Annabelle was telling me, by the way, her goal is to get up to 80 countries. I think within like the next six months. Hmm. So How many we more can, is she at? I think she needs six more. So 74. A country a month, essentially. Yeah. Which I mean, working we're, we're, as a flight attendant is definitely doable. But but most flight attendants don't they have like a kind of set uh, path they fly on? I think you can request. I think you can request once because she's requested okay. to come to Detroit before, and we've like you know picked her up and spent the day with her. Mm-hmm, um, so mm-hmm. so it depends. I'm sure every airline is different. But she was telling me a couple of the countries where uh, she wants to visit. A couple of places in Asia, Mongolia. Um, which she's never been, uh, Sri Lanka, um, where else? She mentioned Venezuela, but maybe right now is not the best time with everything <laughs> going on there. Um, but yeah. yeah, so so I was when with them. When is the best time to go to Venezuela? When you tell was me. the last time no it was a good time to go to Venezuela? I have I don't I don't know enough about Venezuela to even <laughs> even I don't, really I don't either. Comment. To be honest with you. Um, but yeah, so that was good. And then Saturday, I got to see Logan and Ravi, which was great. And then we went to a concert at this really cool venue and we saw Andrea Triana who is a like R&B um I don't really want to call her pop. I would say more like R&B soul 
um, singer from London. And we'll talk more about her later when we do the song of the pod. But the show was great, dude. But it was really funny. My friend Ravi goes, you know, he, I had never heard of her before. And I had no idea what to expect. And he was like, yeah, when we go there, you know, there is a big dance floor. But nobody's really going to be dancing. Everyone's going to be swaying because it's Prague. And I think maybe mm-hmm. in the States, people might go a little harder on the dance floor at concerts. He was right, though. Everyone was just kind of swaying back and forth to the rhythm, myself included. I wasn't, you know, doing any breakdance moves or uh, spinning so on my head. So can I ask a question? Mm-hmm. When we were at, uh, when we were at, we were spinning on your head. <laughs> but if you were in the U.S., you would be. <laughs> oh, for sure. I'd bring I a mean, special <laughs> beanie and do the, do the breakdance head spin, you know? When we were at, when me, you, and Don were at Carlo Vilasnia, um, mm-hmm. they were playing music that I commented on, I think, very passionately that yeah. uh, it was f- no club music because you couldn't dance to it and people were barely moving. When right. you, and you mentioned that last time you were in Prague with David, you went back, you guys went back there. Mm-hmm. Was, uh, I assume since you were there on a weekend, it was packed? It was popping, but it was 90% dudes. Okay. Okay, well, that's I guess going to skew my question. My question, because I was I was going to say, even if it's filled, are they still going to be doing all that swaying? Is that just uh, what you check well, we, people just we, not we, we hit were the, on the dance hip, floor like we uh, dirty Americans floor. do? We okay. were on the hip hop dance floor. People were moving and grooving. It was fun. Moving and grooving. All right, Dad. or as or as uh, or as uh, mystical says, uh, they were uh, shaking the ass. Watch so yourself. What, what was the vibe of the uh, of this uh, concert? Back to the concert. Sorry, it, it you, was no great. head spinning. No head spinning. A lot of swaying, but I mean the band was awesome. The drummer was killing it. So the drummer, I've never really seen this before. So most groups, it was a four five piece group. So it was Andrea Triano was obviously the singer. She also played guitar and played bass on a couple songs. So that was kind of mm. cool. Um, so singer. A uh, guitarist, keyboard player, bass player, and drummer. Uh, so five. So it was a five-piece band. And usually, w- usually if the drummer, you know, just will play the drum kit, right? But this guy was playing shakers, um, had this like cool pad on the top of his drum set that gave him more like electronic style beats. Oh, and like a MIDI was, thing that he, yeah. that he could hit with his drumsticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the other thing that was a great touch. I want one that, of those for drops. It would be sweet. <laughs> that would be awesome. Dude, and then you should have a drumstick, too. You'd have to hit it with the drumstick. That would be hilarious. Um, but, uh. he, but he also used mallets a lot. And for our listeners out there who aren't big music nerds like Jared and I are, mallets are basically a drumstick with like a big kind of cloth like for timpani. pad. Exactly. Very good. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so he was, he was getting Ba-da-da. really good effects on the cymbals kind of like a wave effect where it oh, goes yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of quiet with the, mm-hmm. with the mallets. And the drummer was just fantastic. Like I was really captive. Like Andrea Triano was great, but I was more captivated maybe by the drummer just because one, he was perfectly on beat. Like dude was killing it and he, he was playing and then had the shaker in his right hand while he was using a stick in his other hand. Oh, jeez. Multitasking on a whole nother level, I feel like. Wow. Um, but it was an amazing concert. Um, the beer was actually horrible though. First time I have... I could say that I've been in the Czech Republic and the beer was bad. I don't even remember what type of beer it was. It tasted like American Budweiser. I kid you not. What was the venue again? Um, it was called, um, I believe, like, Melody what, 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 what Jazz. The... Oh, it's like a, like a concert hall. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like a concert hall. Um, but yeah, but they it should was, be ashamed it, of themselves. I think you might have to call like the Better Business Bureau of, of Prague or something like of that. Czech beers, <laughs> right? For you sure. You guys accept this level, this this quality of beer in your country? Exactly, exactly. Which to me, it was it was just a, a fantastic experience. She has serious pipes, as we'll talk about later with the song of the pod. And okay. this also leads me to uh, is it all right if we go into spreading a little love? Spread a little Please. love. So my first shout outs go out to um, Annabelle, Steve, Ravi, and Logan for making the weekend so fantastic. Um, it's always nice when you go somewhere and you can reconnect with uh, old friends and make some new friends. Um, so that was really great. And uh, also taking me, uh, bringing me along with them to the concert. It was absolutely a fantastic time. But my first official shout out goes out to a Texas scientist who was called Foolish for arguing the immune system could fight cancer. So the name of this scientist is James P. Allen, and he now has won a Nobel Prize, a medical Nobel Prize. And so basically he said that he was testing a theory 
that T cells, which is a type of white blood cells that fights against viral and bacterial infections, could actually help the immune system fight cancer. Nobody believed in him. I Like reading this Washington Post article, it seems like everyone was just talking mad shit. Nobody had faith in him. <laughs> I think it, and it motivated, I think, him to really do this. And what he literally said was, so he ran the experiment, but this time the cancer didn't respond. He grew frustrated. I was being told, you're just foolish. This is never going to work. And then he said, that was the one that really pissed me off. So shout out to you, <laughs> um, yes. James P. Allison, for taking that negative energy and motivating motivating yourself to um, work on your uh, body of work. And then what's really interesting, there's also a documentary about it called uh, uh, Breakthrough. Yeah. Stun on those haters, James P. Allen. That's right. Be like, what's this? He, he just has to like walk around with a Nobel Prize like in like in his bag. No, he should have it like a flavor flav, like <laughs> clock, like just put it on as a necklace. Whenever he goes to a meeting, he just puts it down on the table. Yes. <laughs> hold yes. on, hold on. All right, and when, now begin. And then if he says if he says something and then they're like skeptical about it, I would just like point at it. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, point yeah. at the Nobel Prize and be like, uh, excuse me? Uh uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, is that in the way? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's heavier than it looks. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but the crazy <clears throat> thing about this story, too, though, is that um, he lost he lost family from cancer, and I think that also you know really lit the fire for him as well. Yeah, um, for sure. And it's always really. It's really, you know, amazing to hear these stories about, you know, people who go through all sorts of adversity, especially losing family members to cancer. And then instead of just getting down on themselves and not doing anything, you know, taking action and really doing something about it. Uh, I agree. And I have a shout out that is all about taking action. Oh, let's hear it. Do you know Haley Taylor? I do not. Schlitz? That, sorry, I, I, my <laughs> microphone blocked her last name. Uh, well, she's 16. Mm -hmm. And she has just gotten accepted to nine law schools. Wow. Wow. Uh, she graduated Stunting. from high school at 13 uh, through homeschooling. She completed her bachelor's degree via Tarrant uh, County College in Texas Women's University and will now pursue a law degree at Southern Methodist University, Dedman School of Law. Wow, 16, that's amazing. That's crazy. I wonder, uh, so, um, you know, shout out for, uh, for that. Uh, I wonder, though, like, that seems like, a, like, I feel like I would, um, like, yeah, you're killing it, but I feel like I would regret that. Like, I, I would want to have a childhood in, in I, I retrospect. I was thinking the same. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm wondering, I'm wondering what her just daily routine and day-to-day -day life looks like when you're, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I just hope. Exactly. I mean, I think the problem is with a lot of How younger people. How intense do you think her parents are? Oh, they got to be super intense. I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> but I mean, I think the I think the thing about it is, so many young people want to grow up too fast, right? Yeah. And I think nowadays with the internet and with social media, it's so much easier to be exposed to things that you and I never would have been exposed to. You know, I don't know about you, but where I learned a lot of my lessons in high school and middle school and, you know, when I was a kid growing up, it was the school bus. Yeah. You know, I, I had older kids on my school bus. You know, that's that's where I learned a lot of swear words and different things. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't, ha I didn't have the internet back then. I think the internet just started to really become a thing when we were probably in middle school. And then it was really slow dial-up internet. Mm -hmm. I'm remember, sure you remember. Yeah. Remember LimeWire? That was when... Uh, oh, Yeah. Yeah. I had, I think I had frost. I learned wire. a lot from LimeWire, right? <laughs> I learned a lot from LimeWire, a lot about how computers worked, <laughs> right? How to destroy your computer, how to delete things, <laughs> right? <laughs> how to think you deleted things and realize you actually didn't delete shit, right? Um, oh man, good times. Good do you times. have any other shout outs? I do. I have two more, please. So, my second one, I'd like to, uh, Spread Sorry, our I love. At you. Thank you, sir. Um, to uh, our neighbors, uh, what, well, when I say our neighbors, I guess my neighbors or the Czech Republic's neighbors, which Michael, is Slovakia. With the dog that attacked me. <laughs> <laughs> not your neighbors. They deserve no shout outs. We're not spreading any Dude, love every time way. I walk past that house, I can hear the dog growling at me. I think the dog has something against He's me. He's got something against you. Yeah. I might have to put it down in the night. 
<laughs> oh, I think that's the only way. We have to. We have to. It's it's challenging me to a final fight, and I need to show it who's boss. Be careful. Don't uh, don't write a check. Your butt can't cash, buddy. <laughs> Next podcast, I've got scratches all over my face. <laughs> like it was tough, should, but I did you it. Should, you should see the dog. <laughs> oh jeez. Um, well, Jared, let's 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 spread some love here, and. Uh, uh, my next shout out goes out to uh, Susanna Kaputova, who is Slovakia's first elected female president. And she is a 45 year old lawyer, activist, and political newcomer. And on Saturday, she was elected as the nation's first female president. So, big shout out to her. I think that's great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my that last shout out. You know what? I'm, I'm, yeah. uh, um, I'm almost silent. I had one more shout out as well. Oh, let's hear it. And it was let's that. hear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you just said it. That was your shout out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really, I mm-hmm. stole it. All right, mm-hmm. that's oh, okay. Are we, are we using this? We're using the same news source, aren't we? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Good. Well, my last one. Did you hear about the Kenyan teacher, uh, also a Franciscan monk, uh, Peter Tabichi? No. <laughs> so he is a science I was, teacher. I thought that was a rhetorical question. <laughs> it was not. It was not. It definitely was not. So uh, Peter Tabichi is a science teacher from rural Kenya who gives away most of his salary to support poor students. And he has won. Um, uh, he was awarded a one million prize in the recognition of his work um, in uh for deprived schools that struggle with crowded classes and few resources. Hmm. And so, you know, like any good man, Stunning. when he won the Million Dollar Teaching Prize... Rolls Royce Phantom. He, that's right. No, what he did <laughs> is he's giving the majority of that award back to these schools. So a big shout out um, for Spread Mr. Tabichi for uh, improving facilities in Kenya... Um, helping students and providing them with more resources and helping them, uh, all those people in need. I think that's really amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that's, oh, excuse me. I cut you off. No, you're good. I'm sure that's why they, um, like who, I, I don't like the award was given to him because they knew, or, you know, they, they thought they knew and they were right. What he do with it? Like they right. knew they weren't giving it to him for like, oh, you, you're, you're so great. Here's a million dollars. And he'd just be like, thanks. And, you know, as I go, as I say, Rolls Royce Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like they know exactly what he's going to do with that money. Right. And you know what's crazy is Mr. Tabichi and it's better was coming so- from him too, I think. Right. Oh, for sure. Well, he was selected out of 10,000 applicants. Um, and the glo- it's called the Global Teacher Prize, <laughs> is awarded by the Varkey Foundation, whose founder, Sonny Varkey, established the for profit. Uh, GEM's Sounds education like company that runs school. 55 schools in the UAE, Egypt, and Qatar. And this hmm. prize has been going on for five years now. Um, so yeah, so I think that's really amazing. Big yeah. shout out to him. And I figured it could not Spread be more love. fitting for our episode today since it is a teacher's edition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Find the great teachers out there. That's right. That's right. Well, Jared, do you happen to uh, have the time by chance? I don't, Ooh. but the untranslatable owl does. <laughs> That'll just have to do. Um, I got some interesting ones today. Nice. Uh, uh, by the way, untranslatables are idioms, sayings, uh, proverbs that if you translate them directly to English don't really make any sense. That's why early. That's why things like bay, which is uh, Danish for, for poop, is not it's actually non-translatable. Not an untranslatable. That's just a translation. Right. So sayings, idioms that you translate them and they don't really make any sense, but they have some bigger meaning. Mm-hmm. Um, my first one can all this is Bulgarian. Go for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did not realize Bulgarian used a different alphabet. Yep. Cyrillic. Yeah, I guess so. Kind of looks Russian, which mm-hmm. is also Cyrillic. Well, so here's the funny thing: is uh, actually the Cyrillic alphabet was created in Bulgaria. You know, mm. it is used in Russian. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So so if I were to say that to a Bulgarian, they'd be like, well, I mean. <laughs> Whoa there. <laughs> they should be thanking us. That's uh, right. <laughs> for, com- for, for confusing uh, so many people. Dasivuv uh, filma. So Which I think means? You, I think you can guess what one of those words means. Say it again. Dasivuv filma. Dasivuv filma. Oh, film? Mm-hmm. 
It means uh, to be in a movie. And, to be in a movie. Uh, hmm. Oh, wait. I was just I almost just told you what it was, but that's Ooh. where you come in. <laughs> well, watch yourself, Jared. Uh, let's see. Slipping on movie. gator piss. Is this like, uh, hmm. Can you, get, can you give me, well, let's see here. Let me guess before I have you give me an example to be in a movie. If, if Is you this can't... like when you think the world revolves around you? Mm, not really, but that's a good guess. Okay. Okay. But it has I it almost kind of have an has an aspect of that. Okay. To to want to be the center of attention? No, you're going the wrong way with it. I'll give going you a clue okay. because uh, I think so, I think uh, I have a good example for for you. Okay. So, um you and I we travel together a lot and um we also from time to time like to do some foolish things. Mm-hmm. And uh a lot of times though you're always questioning every like whenever we travel you're questioning every sort of thing you're like well what if this happens right what if what if our plane uh gets uh what if our airline uh goes out of business and we have to buy a new flight <laughs> the day of it's like chad that would never happen that's ridiculous what are you never, talking about not. <laughs> <laughs> what if we get stranded in an airport because our uh airline ceases to exist overnight right uh, and, I'm like, you, Huawei. and i'm like dude you're just throwing out all these crazy scenarios like we're fine yeah, like, like, is what is it like to be in a movie? It's like we don't, you don't need to, like, it's like you're just, you're just in a movie right now. Uh huh. So it's like when you, just when you have like a vivid imagination and you're thinking about, um, like the like all the scenarios that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, because I said it was about you, I think now you're yeah. you're making it seem not as bad as it is. What it really <laughs> is is overthinking something, creating different scenarios or certain situations. Uh, well, this is not really what you were talking. Uh, I guess you're kind of right. You know what? I need to retract what I said earlier and say you're kind of right because it also does mean to have a big ego and uh-huh. expressive or okay. passionate about something. So you were kind of right. Okay. So that's a multifaceted untranslatable right there. It is. That's a that's a full full figured uh, untranslatable. Okay. Nice. So I have two for you. Okay. The first one is Swedish, and I have to give a special shout out to my friend Ashley. Um, and, uh, as Who well, that? uh, our listeners out there should check out her Instagram. If you are into stylish cuts, she's actually a, uh, hairstylist and a damn good one at that. And, uh, her Insta is Ashley is styling. Uh, and the word is, she sent this to me. The word is, um, Smoltenstrahl. I probably didn't say it right, but let me, <laughs> let me describe this one for it you. It sounded Jared, be- perfect to me. Go Thank ahead, you. Sorry. Thank you. I, I know you're you're fluent in uh, <laughs> Swedish, and so I, I, yeah. that feels good. Checks out to me. Let me run the tape back. <laughs> yeah, no, it checks out. <laughs> exactly. So, um, Smoltron uh, Stela, yep. mm-hmm. I think is what it That's is. That's even better that time. Um, <laughs> right. So, it's basically, um, so it's one word, and it... It's not really a phrase, so let me try to let me try to explain this for you and see if you can kind of get what I'm going with here. So, so Jared, like, say say the weather becomes nicer out. You know, uh, if you can check out our Instagram untranslatable podcast the other day, it was sunny and beautiful in Prague. Same here um, too. Nice. Also um, on Instagram, Chad doesn't. Chad, uh, keep going. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, so, so, but say, say, you know, the weather was nice in Prague and then maybe I'm walking around and I stumble upon a beautiful park with maybe either some beautiful flowers or maybe who knows, maybe even something crazy like a field of strawberries. And, uh, and how do you, how would you feel, Jared, if you just were strolling around Prague or Philly, a beautiful day out and you just stumble upon this beautiful field of sunflowers or strawberries or or uh, just a pretty field how would you feel uh it bliss okay i, I probably wouldn't feel bliss to be honest with you um overwhelmed uh excited um i don't know i uh, hmm. see this this is why i think the because i'd probably be like oh would you look at that right <laughs> Right. Well, and, and so this is why uh, I love this word, but it's difficult. It's always difficult to try to explain a one word that has mm-hmm. like a meaning. But so let me just give it to you, Jared. Um, Smotronstela is uh, literally a place of wild strawberries. One word, a place of wild strawberries. But what this means is a special place that is discovered, treasured, and returned to for solace and relaxation, solace. a personal idol free from stress or sadness. So basically your happy place filled mm. with strawberries. Okay. Yeah, okay. What's your happy place? 
Um, de- depend depends on the day. Usually, my apartment with a guitar in my hand, or mm, my third Prague. place, uh, the school gym. <laughs> Maybe Prague as well. I do enjoy Prague. <laughs> depends where though in Prague, because when you're when you're in a spot with all those tourists, it becomes a very frustrating place very quickly. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I have uh, another one with the interesting uh, alphabet. I don't know what you would call this. Georgian. I mean, Georgian's the language, but I don't know what you would right. call their alphabet. But uh, it, what the phrase is, metsamet skochi, and it means 13th pig. 13th pig. Huh. We have, we have a very popular English untranslatable. Is that like when the fat lady sings? Uh, no. 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 But that's a good guess, I guess. This one's kind of difficult. Uh-huh. This is difficult because okay. you have to know. It, it involves something about pigs that you'd have to know for it to make sense. <laughs> Would I know that Can thing I, about well, the pigs? So I'll give you a clue. Okay. Pigs have pigs usually have 13 breast, breasts, 13 nips. Really? Yeah. Really? Interesting. Mm-hmm. Learning all sorts of new things today. <laughs> um this is not just about pig. languages, travel, culture. Also about Fussle. pig nipples. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have, uh, dude. I don't even know oh, where man. to begin. To be honest, uh, uh, sorry, I need to write that down. Also about pig nipples. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um okay. Well, it, so our, the uh, English untranslatable would be. Um, this is an A and B conversation, so see your way out. Okay, I see. So it's basically like, uh, I mean, I know what the English untranslatable means. So the so the thirteenth pig is basically just like, yeah, get get out of here. Like you're not yeah. involved in this. Essentially, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, which is kind of sad in the pig scenario because it's like, right. listen, you're the last one. You don't get a nipple. You're just gonna have to go and and leave us alone and die somewhere. But, but wait, hold up. If they have thirteen nipples, wouldn't thirteen pigs? Wouldn't I said that twelve work? though. I said twelve. You had twelve. I thought. Okay, I thought you said thir- yeah, yeah. Twelve makes a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Good. Now that makes a lot of sense. All right. So my last one. But uh, it, uh, it means a person who jumped into a conversation uh, and states his or her opinion just to get someone's attention, but the uh-huh. conversation's not about them or for them. Makes sense. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. So my, my last one is check for today. And once again, Pavlina has been coming in the clutch, and she's been sending me some random ones here. Um, and it is Malova Certa Nazed, which means to paint a devil onto a wall. Mm. Is that like to um like worst case scenario catastrophizing? Very good. Mm-hmm. You're on it. Very good. Yeah, basically make the worst mm-hmm. out of a situation or ima- imagine like the worst could happen. I definitely do this once in a while. As so Jared's that's similar mentioned. to be in a movie. That's similar to it my uh, Bulgarian one. It is. Yes, it is. You do do that all the time. I do. I need to learn how to not do it. Um, but yeah. All right, Jared. What, do you have any more? Uh, no, that's all I have. All right. So let's get our audience engaged. I would I would like to say that our listeners in some ways are students. I feel like we're occasionally teaching them a thing or two. Wouldn't you say, Jared? I mean, you'd have to ask them. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm make a bold claims here. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, I'll make Email that claim us. and I'll stand by Tweet it. Tweet us or spread a little love and give us five star reviews and tell us uh but i'd like to think so you know we i, we, I, I sometimes i'm scared to i think admit that mm-hmm. because then we're uh because then people will be like yeah uh relax there chief you're not as uh smart as you think you are right but i like to think that you could pull some stuff out of there at least on translatables oh, almost a couple definitely. of these are real <laughs> oh for sure <laughs> And today, obviously, some slang terms. I mean, I the the teacher became the student when we were going over the slang terms. That's for sure. Yeah, uh, there are a lot another of things thing we try surprised. to do though mm-hmm. is we also try to make it at least kind of entertaining. Oh, because definitely. Because if we don't do that, at least in our mind, people aren't really going to be interested. Right, and it's and it's the same with teaching. You know, there have been there have been some days. Usually, my Monday morning first hour class, which is at eight a.m., I walk in there and you can just feel the. Uh, Feel the oh, it's Monday. 
Mm-hmm. I, really, you're going to make me get up and play a game right now. But then once you get them started, you know, they start to smile a little bit. The The atmosphere in the room tends to lighten up. It feels like, you know, the sun is slowly coming out of the clouds. Mm. Um Wow, that's yeah, beautiful, so, Chad. So, so I want to start off our <laughs> thank you. I want to start off our segment with some games I really like, and I think some of these games also could be useful for um, not only language teachers but teachers in general, and maybe even people who are uh, maybe planning a little social gathering, something like that. Right? Ooh, so, I like that. Yeah. So, so one game that that I guess this one isn't really super um, translatable to social gatherings per se. But, Some might uh, say it's untranslatable. That's that's true. Um, is Jeopardy. Jeopardy, using mm. a PowerPoint, there are thousands of them online. You can just Google a topic, type in Jeopardy PowerPoint. You can find pretty much whatever you oh, want. Oh, really? You can like, download a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah. And, and it has a Jeopardy board. And you click on, you know, click on, you know, if you do food, that's it'd be like... That's a fancy PowerPoint. Yeah. And I couldn't wait, tell you. you can actually, wait, it'll actually be the board, and you can click on it like two hundred for yeah. hip hop lyrics. Yeah, yeah. I've hmm. used this in my German classes, in my English classes, um, and it's really, really, really fun. Uh, but usually, what I do is I don't have, as we explained Jeopardy on a previous episode, I don't make the students say what is blah blah blah. Mm, I right? was going to ask that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't make them do that because I think that would be confusing. It would be good, though, I guess, if you were teaching students how to say questions. That would be really cool, actually, and a good way to yeah. use Jeopardy. Yeah. But usually because, I mean, that's I, not my purpose. I mm-hmm. think the actual question uh, format of it is even – not. I wouldn't say confusing to us native English speakers, but it, it's foolish. Like, yeah. it, like even to people that like Jeopardy, I think they'd say – some might say that that's foolish. Right. Yeah, it's a um, little strange. And it, it sort of does add, like, this slightly added level of complication. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, actually, let's let's what, break what, this. What, mm-hmm. what, what before you move on though? What what mm-hmm. were some of your f- go to topics that you would type in if you were looking for ones for classes? It, I mean, it depends on the topic we've been learning about. So, in my German uh, classes, I've done Jeopardies for food, for um, right. you know, like uh, um, telling the time, where you have a you know picture of a clock. Hopefully they can, you know, everyone does digital now, so hopefully they can read a clock and then, you know, they have to say the time in English or in German. Oh, so there's a, so there's a variety. I, I didn't even know this existed online yeah. like oh, this. Oh, yeah. Because, so there's a variety of levels anywhere from like, you could have an actual game with your friends mm-hmm. to, to you could teach like s- simple language levels. Right. I mean, you, or, or you could have a Jeopardy. I mean, if you really wanted to, if you were teaching a grammar class, you could even have a grammar Jeopardy where it's like... You have to fill in the right verb conjugation. You know, with German, oh, right, you have all right. these different verb conjugations. It's it's the same with Czech. So it would be like a sentence would be like he um, he blanks to school, and then you would have walk in parentheses, right? And they would have to say he walks to school, right? Mm. Something like this. So so you can do fill in the blank. I mean, the the opportunities are really endless. You could do a Jeopardy where you have just an image. You know, maybe you're learning about animals, and you have a picture of a hippopotamus up there. And then they have to say hippopotamus in whatever Hippopotamus. <laughs> Hip, hip, hop. <laughs> hippopotamus. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so Jeopardy is a good one. And actually, I want to break this, uh, at least part of this segment down, I guess, into kind of two categories. One would be like computer slash tech games that I use that mm-hmm. get my students engaged. Because Jeopardy is, I mean, you could do it with... I mean, it would take a lot more time and a lot more work. You could write out, you know, 100, 200, 300, 400 on a whiteboard, but then you'd yeah, have to create the cards beforehand. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that would be more difficult. But the ones online, you can download them usually for free. They're very, very useful and a lot of fun. So that's one of them. Uh, another game um, or, or two, two tools I use that I would consider games are Quizlets and Kahoots. Quizlet Live and a Kahoot. Do you, are you familiar with either of those, Jared? Uh, quiz, no, no. Okay, so so these so for these games, students use their mobile phones uh, and they type in a PIN code. And the PIN code basically will take them to whatever, either a Quizlet or a Kahoot. And then these pin, games... A PIN code into what? On their mobile phones. Uh, so, so on a website, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So you go... Uh, or okay. They have the app too. So it's either an app or a website. You type in the game PIN. You, you write in a nickname. Who has the game PIN though? The, the, you, so in class, when you, when you play, you project it on the projector screen, 
And it shows the pin, game pin. So everyone's playing on the same thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess. And, and the, the, thing, the reason why I like Quizlet and Kahoot, Quizlet, these are, they have these to are work, the apps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Quizlet.com and Kahoot.it. Mm. Um, and so Quizlet, they actually have to play in teams, and the students set their phones next to each other, and it will be like the date. We, d- we did one on U.S. holidays last week. So, for example, the date when the United States declared their independence from Great Britain, right? And then there would be options on everybody's phone, and they're all different. And they would obviously pick 4th of July, right? Um, so that's how Quizlet obviously. works. Right. And uh, But Kahoot's uh, a little different, and that's individual. You can do Team Kahoot's, but I always do individual. And the students get super psyched about it. It's really mm-hmm. funny. And I have students who may not be very talkative in class, but you play a Kahoot or a Quizlet, and they're just going bonkers. Oh, I'm sure adding the competition to it helps. Most definitely. Uh, most definitely. Uh, uh, people are, most people are competitive in general. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Any other games? Yeah. So, th- so those are like the tech, the tech games, I would say, um, oh, right, where, where, right. where you need computers. Right. So then there's other games that I like to play that are, I mean, really little to no preparation or little to no technology besides maybe a marker and a whiteboard or a chalkboard. Mm-hmm. And so my first one, I like to call it freestyle crossword. And so the way this works is you, you can do it in two ways. Usually what I do is I write the topic up on the board, either vertically or horizontally. So last week we were talking about travel in my second grade class. And so what I did was I wrote travel up on the board and you want to space the letters out a little bit, you know, T-R-A-V-E-L. And then what you tell the students is they have to think of words re- related to travel and connect them with that, like a crossword puzzle. Mm-hmm. So if it starts with T, you could write the word trip right below the, the beginning T in travel, right? Mm-hmm. Or you could use um, the, um, the L for luggage or something like this. And then after they write a couple words, either going uh, up or down, then they can write words going across. And it's really fun. And All on I, one topic. Yeah. I mean, okay. you, yeah. Or, or you could do it even, you know, you could also leave the board empty and say, okay, I want you guys to write vocabulary words that we've been doing this week. Or the last mm. month, or whatever. Or but you could do like food. Exactly. Exactly. Mm, I got gotcha. you. Okay. And that one's a lot of fun. And what you need to do with that one, though, because I've, I've done this before, and I've thought I explained it properly, and my students didn't quite get it. So you have to emphasize that each person needs to go up to the board and needs to write a word, because otherwise you might have one kid who's the the smarty pants of the group, and they're standing There's up there. One. There's always right. at least one. Ugh. Right. And and they're just standing up there writing all the words. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that's not the point. How do you the feel about is, those kids? Do you want to slap them in the face? No, I. I, <laughs> I, 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 one, I was surprised you even had to think about that. Hmm. Do I want to <laughs> slap them in the face? <laughs> I'm going to say no. <laughs> right. But <laughs> I mean, here, here's the thing. I, I like their. I love their enthusiasm, and I like that. You know, these are the ones who are really engaged. But our episode right. today is how to get the other ones engaged. And sometimes, if you don't know how to manage those students, it can really disengage a lot of the classroom. I mean, it's like anything. If, if you just indulge them and uh, and keep going right. to them. Right. And, and you can't, um, you know, and sometimes I feel bad because, you know, they raise their hand and they're super excited and they're ready to be called on. And then That's going like, to be Haley Taylor Schlitz when she's in law school. Yes, yeah, probably 16 true. 16-year-old in law school. That's true. 16, not six. Excuse me. <laughs> she's killing it, though. That's awesome. But, yeah, uh, that's true. But yeah, so um, anyways, though, with, with that cr- freestyle crossword game, that one's pretty fun and it's a really good one. You can also use that as a teacher... Um, you can also use that as a teacher to gauge what vocabulary they know. So you could do it before you start teaching a topic to kind of see where they're at. And then you could use it again a couple of weeks later and see how, how much more, uh, how many more words they write up on the board. And I mm-hmm. guess that one you could, in theory, use at a party if you wanted. Yeah. Yeah, I think you could. I would play that, I guess. It's, it's fun. It can be fun. Um, and, and, you know, for native speakers, you could pick really obscure topics. Um, right, 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 right. You can make it as diff, and that's another one where you can make it as easy or difficult, easy, you know, level, right. not easy, yeah. but you know, level based as you wanted it to. Exactly. So that's a good one. Another one that's a hit, definitely also a hit at parties. And I don't even, I don't know if <laughs> Chad's it's a hit at parties, everyone. If you didn't that, notice, that's right. Um, uh, I don't know if you call it twenty-one questions or what you call it, but it's when you, when never you never basi- have I ever. 
Well, actually, that <laughs> I'll have to try that in class. That might be oh, kind of Jesus fun. Jesus Christ, that but sounds I, worse than the Reddit. Uh, I've never no, played a anything. Never Have I Ever that hasn't turned weirdly sexual. That's that's true, but you're probably playing them at parties where people are also drinking. Uh, uh, yeah, no comments. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the one thing, though, I guess if you're a language teacher and you want to try Never Have I Ever, which for those mm-hmm. of you who don't know, usually you, you say Never Have I Ever um, eaten... I don't know. What have I never eaten? Never have sushi. I ever eaten squid. I have eaten sushi. Gave me food poisoning. Mm. Oh, not right. a fan that's of sushi. Right. We've, um, we've so, heard this before. <laughs> right. Never have I ever eaten um, squid, right? Mm-hmm. And then if someone's eaten squid... They have to put their finger down. Exactly. So you just delicious. <laughs> exactly. Um, you should try but, it. But what I would do, I guess, if I was a, using that in a language classroom, I think the phrase never have I ever is a little confusing. So I would just say, I have never. I have never eaten mm. sushi. You know, I, that's yeah. how I would alter that. And for never the have I ever is how no one would actually say it. That's a good point. Right. I never right. really thought about that. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, so so the other game though, I think it's called Twenty One Questions. It's and by the way, ha- yeah. When playing Never Have I Ever, how many times have you heard someone say, "Wait, am I supposed to put my fingers down if I've done it or if I haven't oh, done it?" Oh, every every time, <laughs> every time. You should lose a couple fingers automatically <laughs> just for just for asking that. I feel yeah, like yeah. Put your finger down for every time you have to re-ask that question. Right, exactly, <laughs> definitely. Um, another good game though is uh, I think it's called Twenty One Questions. It's where, or maybe it's called something different. But you hold up a card, you know, or or you can stick it on your forehead if you really mm, want. But the classic office it. clip. Exactly. And so, so yeah, that clip's crazy. Um, but you, you know, so I've done this when we, we did a lesson about famous people. And what I did is I had the students write down famous people on slips of paper, tore them out of their, out of their little, little notebooks. I put them in, in like a hat or something, a bag, jumbled them around, and then put them in groups of three to four, passed out the slips, and then they'd have to hold them up. How many of them had check famous people? I told them Czechs, Americans, really whoever. So, so there were the, the how most many of the popular... famous people did you not know? Is more what I'm getting at. Um, I knew most of them because most of them okay. are pretty popular Czech. Like they had the president, they had Zeman, they had Babish, which is um, I don't the even Czech remember what you mean. The Czech, yeah, Zeman is uh, a Czech president. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. And then they had Babish, who's I'm another Czech American. politician that uh, not a lot of people are a big fan <laughs> of here. Um, Donald Trump, of course, was one of them. Um, LeBron James, Michael Jordan were always the popular goat, the ones. Goat. That's right. That's right. Um, what Double other ones goat. did they do? Um, the, yeah, just a lot of, I mean, your stereotypical famous people. Right. Um, right, right. And that one's a lot of fun. But the thing is, you can change that up. You can do, you could do names of places. You could do countries. You could do mm-hmm. foods. You could do mm-hmm. animals. You could do anything. Right. Um, and that one's a lot of fun. And that one gets the students really talking. I enjoy... Depending on the goal for the game, like the office, you could do races. Right? (laughs) Wouldn't suggest it. Wouldn't suggest it. Um, Refer to the office to see how cringy that can get and how quickly it gets cringy. Um, But yeah, and so so that one's really good. Another one I really like is basically kind of like hot potato. And for those of you who don't know what hot potato is, it's where you have a ball, or who knows, maybe you're really going crazy and taking it literally, and you have a potato. Maybe you even just came yeah, out of the just oven. Put it in the oven for like a thirty minutes on right. four hundred. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wouldn't recommend you should it. Should be but, good to go. <laughs> but so the way this game works is you throw, you know, a ball. You can even ball up a piece of paper. Um, and what you do is you say a word. So if we were doing travel, you know, I'd say Czech Republic. I throw it to Jared. Jared would say mm. Berlin. There you go. And so you keep throwing the hot potato. And usually you give the students either three seconds or five seconds. Um, and then if they can't think of a word or if they repeat a word someone else said, then they're out. Mm-hmm. Right. And the mm-hmm. goal is to be the last person standing. That, um, oh, these are good games. I like this. Yeah. These sound and, like fun. And that I one thought you these could, were going to be cheesy, to be honest with you. Okay. Well, don't worry. We're getting there. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but that one would also be fun at a party or a social gathering. You oh yeah! Be, you just gotta be careful. You don't have somebody too competitive that's like whipping the ball at people. You know? <laughs> oh, that's definitely gonna happen. Oh, have for you ever sure. met Brad, by the way, or Don? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, but that one's that one's pretty good. I like that one. And that's then, a good drinking game mm-hmm. too. That would be. That's like true. instead of being out, you have to take a drink. Right. But I think yeah, yeah, yeah. That would work. Um, another another one you can do that's kind of similar is I I just call it categories. 
where you have them stand in a circle, you give them a category, and then they say a word, and instead of having a ball, you just point at someone. Or mm-hmm. you can go around the circle, depending. But the thing about going around the circle... You have, you have time to prepare. Exactly. Which mm-hmm. is why I prefer to just have them point. And it's the same premise. And you can also do that game, the categories game, but you can make it more like a chain. And what I mean by this is, instead of... And then it's more of a memory game. So the way it would work is if we were standing in a circle, the two of us making a wonderful circle. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> like we used to do uh, when we'd spin in the park. <laughs> exactly. Um, the, the way it would work is if, if, the, if, the, <laughs> if the category was sports, right? I'd say basketball. Then Jared mm-hmm. would say... Soccer. Soccer. Then what I would have to do is I would say basketball and soccer, and then uh, I would say another word. One. Exactly. And that one's a Ooh, good that one. Gets, that gets tough quick, too. Exactly. Exactly. But that one's a lot of fun, and the students seem to enjoy that one as well. Um, and then the other one of my other favorite games, and this one's a little cheesy, is it's called Vocabulary Race. When you hear that, Jared, what do you think that entails? I mean, in the most basic form is like, uh, based off of some sort of specific topic, um, you you have them write down as many words uh, based off of that topic as possible. Very good. But the way I do is I, I split Ta-da. the class into two groups and have them line up. And I make them stand a certain distance away from the whiteboard. Mm. And I give them a topic. U.S. holidays, travel, food, whatever. And then I put a timer on for one minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, however long you want. And they have to run up to the board, write the word on the board, run back to their line, pass their marker to Ooh, their classmate. That's more interactive than what I was saying. Right. And that one, my first year students... That doesn't sound cheesy to me. You don't think so? No, I like that. Okay. It's a lot of I, fun. And I like this, And I think I like the ones that, that add the physical element to it. Right. It's a lot of fun. Most Where definitely. Where they're also racing. Although uh, I can imagine, at least, I don't know about them, but at least me slipping and like nailing my face into a desk or something. Right. Trying to beat someone. <laughs> oh, for sure. And what's funny is some students do take it super, uh, super competitive. Um, another good game that's also a really popular party game is Taboo. Where mm-hmm. taboo is where you have a word um, that that's that what you, you played last or last week, right? You mentioned it, that in the last is. episode. I it believe. is, yeah, yeah. We were playing taboo, and we did it with places. So I gave them a place. They had to explain to their their groups, mm. and then they would write the word on their little little whiteboards that they had and show me the word. Um, and there's a lot of different variations of taboo, right? Um, but the main thing is they can't say the word or words associated with it. So if we were doing if we were doing sports and the word was soccer or football for our non-American listeners out there, football. you couldn't say, you couldn't, obviously soccer or football, you couldn't say foot. Um, you know, there are certain words you're not allowed to say. Yeah, goal. Right. Like the obvious words. Exactly. Um, and that one's a really fun one as well. Um, I, um, mm-hmm. My family, usually around Christmas when all the family's there, we do like a game night uh, after Christmas or oh, whatever. Nice. And taboo is tends to be a staple at our at our game nights, like the board game version of it. Right, right. Gets and that pe- one's a gets, lot of fun. Gets the family going. Oh, definitely. And another good vocabulary game that doesn't doesn't really it, it could require a lot of prep depending on how you do it. But you could also do like kind of like a categories, just like a very easy categories. And for those of you out there who don't know what categories is it's a game where usually you get a card and there's like specific things like something that weighs over 20 pounds um a country uh, you know different categories what i mm-hmm. usually do though is i will give them a topic instead of you know these different individual categories so i'll give them a topic and then i'll write a, a letter on the board so maybe s and i would do foods right um and then you know they'd write i don't know like sausage or sweets or um sugar you know and they have to try to write as many s words related to food in um 20 seconds or 30 seconds and then they compare their lists with their classmates and then if you um if you're the only person with that word you get a point if other people have that word you cross it off Mm, okay i got you so it's like a bare bones categories i like that but it's fun okay I have a couple game recommendations for you. Let's hear that it. I I'm thought excited. Of myself. Wonderful. Uh, number one, Mad Libs. Mm. Can you explain to our listeners out there what Mad Libs are? Uh, Mad Libs are a, usually they come in, in like a, a sort of a booklet and sort of on the same paper that like a, a coloring book would be. <laughs> right. 
and it's uh, these little stories with crucial, uh, crucial words missing, and what they do all it, and it'll be like blah 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 went to the, and under it'll say noun, and you have to fill it in with a noun, right? And blah 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 verb to the store and you have to fill in some verb and then and and so what it does is you know you make your own story but it also all it gives you is the um what do you call those um verb noun adverb adjective i mean just types of words yeah it it tells you just the type of word to put in Mm -hmm. and then from there uh and and then so I, i think that's great for you know a language learner to just be like what give me a noun you know and they're like what's a noun it's like person place or thing right um, and so those, and, and, you know, those are, um, speaking of games that always turn to seem sexual, uh, seem to turn sexual. Could be, yeah. That's definitely one of them. All right, Jared. So, so, so since you mentioned Mad Libs, I want to, I want to do one with you right now. Okay. We'll read it. So I need an adjective, Jared. Um, um, heavy. Heavy. Okay. A verb ending in ed. Uh, crossed. Crossed. Okay. A noun that is plural. Mm. Cheerleaders. <laughs> okay. Cheerleaders. Okay. I'm curious to see where this is going. A liquid. Uh. <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Coffee, okay. <laughs> Another plural noun. Has to be different than cheerleaders. Mm. Mascots. Okay, I see, I see where you're going here. A famous person. Gritty. <laughs> Gritty. The mascot, that Philadelphia mascot. Oh, yeah, okay, good. A place? Uh, Florida. Oh, geez. Here. Also, unrelated, I told my students about the Florida Man Challenge. Have you heard about this? No. Is it's it where you type in... It, no, it's where you type in, in... You type in Florida Man and then your birth date, and you see what crazy Florida Man headlines oh. came up on your birthday. <laughs> my students loved it. Okay, Jared, an occupation. Um, plumber. Okay, plumber. Another noun. Club. Nationality. Oh, come on, man. White. <laughs> White's not a nationality. Oh, sorry. It's a race. <laughs> um, <Or> skin color. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll edit that out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, nationality. Um, Portuguese. Okay. Female celebrity. Mariah Carey. Okay. Noun? Mm. Uh, uh, camera. Okay. A uh, name of a uh, female name. Janice. <laughs> Janice. Okay. Another plural noun. Um, pipes. <laughs> okay. A number. Four. And one last adjective. Uh, is ghastly an adjective? I believe it sure, is. Sure, sure. Ghastly. All right. All right, so here we go. So, Jared, this is a personal ad that you might see on Craigslist. Here we go. Mm. I enjoy Send long... Send it to me later. I will. <laughs> I enjoy long, heavy walks on the beach, getting crossed in the rain, and serendipitous encounters with cheerleaders. I do I like really that. Li- I really like pina coladas mixed with coffee. And Ooh. romantic candlelit mascots. I am well read from Dr. Seuss to Gritty. I travel frequently, especially to Florida. <laughs> when I'm not busy with work, I am a plumber. I'm looking for a club and beauty in the form of a Portuguese goddess. She Ooh. should have the physique of Mariah Carey okay. and, the, uh. and the camera of Janice. <laughs> I would prefer if she knew how to cook, clean, and wash my pipes. <laughs> I know I'm not very attractive in my picture, but it was taken four days ago, and I have since become more ghastly. <laughs> That's hilarious. I know I'm not attractive. I know I don't look that good in my picture, but it was taken four days ago. That's right. I look way better since then. 
<laughs> so here, I'm going to take a screenshot of this and I will send this to you because, but anyways, what's cool is this uh, website, it's called madtakes.com, which is basically an online ad lib where you can fill it in on the spot. And for, for, all, of our, for all of our teachers out there, uh, thank you, Mad Libs. For all of our teachers out there, you can also print this out, or even if you're having a party, you can print this out and fill it in as well. I think mm -hmm. it's better when you see the story with the blanks and you can fill it in, uh, but I sometimes it's funny to fill in the blanks and see where it goes. That shows you, uh, I, I think I was, I, do you remember when we were younger and there would be those books of them? Uh-huh. That's what I was thinking of. Now I realize that saying that there are those booklets, that's pretty, mm -hmm. that's pretty antiquated thing to say because you can get them anywhere. Probably that's now. true. That's true. But that's where they originally came from. And I used right. to bring those with me on road trips all the time. Oh, really? All the time. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. my family would not entertain those. I mean, I would write them myself for my own entertainment, I guess. So maybe, oh, really? maybe I'm just weird like that. Oh, oh yeah. Of course. Uh, of course. I was a weird kid. Anyways, that's a great first tip, though, Jared. I'm definitely going to use that. What else do you have for me? This one takes more preparation, so it might not be your favorite. Okay. Uh, scavenger hunt. Okay. And so I don't know if you can do. I don't know what sort of range you have with these kids. What sort of mm -hmm. collar? What? Wh how? How far away they're allowed to leave the classroom? But uh, I did kind of like the. I, I like the idea of a scavenger hunt where you give them some sort of goal mm -hmm. with clues or some sort of like. And like the clues are like based off of like find this in this room or find this in this room. Right. Uh, something like that. And then you could even do that in sort of a Mad Libby sort of way, also where you build a story around it. And right. you, each clue oh, gives you some sort of, uh, and then you, once you get all the clues, then there's some sort of other thing you have to figure out with the clues, try kind of filling in spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, there's actually, I found one online that actually kind of based it off of using German as well. So I'm, I'm going to read a little bit here. Okay. Um, Give the class a list of 10 to 15 t things they need to find. For example, in a German class, you can include words like Stein, Blume. Stein is rock, Blume is flower, Holtz, wood. Mm -hmm. Throw in some shockers that gain them triple points like Wurm or Vogel, uh, which is bird. Worm, worm and bird, yeah. Uh, uh, they don't have to physically con uh, collect all objects either. They can write a list take pictures or do drawings once they find them. Some of the items might be more challenging to locate, but your students will never forget the German words that they learn in the process, digging mm -hmm. for a worm. I mean, obviously you're not going to have your students dig for worms, but... You never know. You never know. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. Who knows? We, we also... Uh, we used to do scavenger hunts actually in... I used to teach at a, a, like a German for Kids summer camp. Mm -hmm. And we would actually take them outside and do that. We would have that, them find a tree, a leaf. It's way more conducive mm -hmm. that way, too, if you have, like, woods or stuff around. Right. It's easier exactly. to hide things. It's e there's more space. Right. Um, do you remember any games that, like, I mean, you took German uh, as in high school. Is that when you started mm -hmm. taking German? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you Do you remember any games that you played? Oh, yeah. And th this is one that I actually haven't done here yet, uh, believe it or not. I think maybe because, well, we did it in high school, so I guess it, it's the same age as my students. Yeah. The fly swatter game. You probably know what I'm talking about, right? Mm, elaborate, please. Okay, so the fly swatter game is where um, the teacher either has cutouts of words with, like, if it's a whiteboard or chalkboard, I guess you could have magnets and you stick them on there, or you just write the words on the boards. You have the students stand in two teams. Each team has, you know, they're in lines. You have a fly swatter in your hand. And then you can either, I would suggest describing the word in, in the target language. So if I'm teaching German and, you know, maybe, maybe the word I want my students to find is Stein, which is like a stone or a rock. You could say something like, you know, it can be black or brown or gray or colorful. It can be heavy. You know, things like this, and then they have to run up to the board, and the first person to slap the word Stein with their f fly swatter gets a point. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And that one also can get really competitive. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can use the fly swatter as a, a weapon. That's a oh, lot definitely. of the rules. <laughs> that's right. Jared has the official fly swatter game rule book. But that's um, one we played a lot, and that one was usually pretty well received by everybody. 
I don't remember many games that I played, mm-hmm. but I do remember as far as I mean, this is not just games we're talking about. This is keeping students engaged. Right. What I remember is we did a uh, in French class. We did a breakfast. Oh, and, nice. Uh, she and we we all some of us had to bring in stuff. And then our French teacher brought in a bunch of stuff. And one reason it was memorable is because our French teacher bought in a uh, cider uh, that had alcohol in it. And this was a class in, at like ten in the, nine or ten in the morning. And we were like, you know, <laughs> fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And we we're like, and, and that was interesting. Not that we got hammered or anything, but it was just like, oh my god, we're drinking booze in the morning and high in school. Right. But anyway. Um, but it was like a great. It was. It was also a great. Uh, you know, obviously we could only speak French, and we were. She was mm-hmm. explaining the different, uh, like, how, like the etiquette of eat of how breakfast is eaten in in, in France and what e- all the food was, right? And uh, and like we eat this with this, and this goes. And it was so. It was obviously delicious. We were eating food. We all were. We all right. like eating food. <laughs> of so course. So it was. It was that is a good way to get students engaged already. Definitely. And then it was just. And then you know, obviously we were. She was. You know, we were speaking French about it, and and uh, and it was it was fun. I like that. And it's but I don't, and, I, don't, I, don't I sorry. Go ahead. And 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 to me as well, that's also like very, it's relatable. Like it's it's real world things you're doing. You right. know, I think it's always mm-hmm. good when you can, you know, the the stuff we talk about in a language classroom generally are kind of like in a vacuum. You know. Yeah. But that's like some useful stuff that you can use outside of the classroom, which is always great. And I think I, also, go ahead. I do think if I if I you know I always mention that I learned French for forever you know all through elementary middle school and high school and I and I wasn't that good at it. I do think though if I learned French like they taught it when I was in Germany, I mm-hmm. might not be great at it, but I would definitely be better at it because I think e- even though in Germany you know I wasn't immersed in it, they I I think they because there were there were a lot of obviously people learning German that weren't native German speakers and just the nature right. of the school. They understood a little bit more like that practical application of learning a language. So even right. though there was a lot of grammar, it wasn't as deep into the grammar as um, even the U.S. was. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I think the other thing, too, with that type of activity and engaging your students, you I think as a teacher, it's important to be creative on how you... Um, how you get your students involved. So if you use food, you're engaging other sensations than just reading, yes. writing, speaking, right? They're eating, you're touching, you're tasting. And people definitely um, remember good food. Oh, for sure. And that's also why I like those games where you get students to be active. Because I think there's also something about getting up and moving. You know, we, we spend so, mu- so much time in general, people in general, sitting at our desk, whether it's at school, at work, wherever. It's good to get them up, get them moving, um, get the blood pumping maybe to the brain a little bit more so they're more alert. Um, but yeah, that's really good. I, I've We've done that in some German classes before. Um, I brought in some treats when we were when I was doing a Christmas lesson with my English for Kids class here, and the kids really enjoyed that. Mm, yeah, yeah. That's an easy way to win over uh, anyone. I mean, that works. Oh, for that's sure. That's not even just a student thing. That works at my job. <laughs> oh, definitely. Whenever someone just randomly shows up my desk, hey, you want a donut? Although it doesn't happen that often, but uh, I, whenever it happens, I remember. Can't be like, those Krispy Kremes now, though. I know, I know. Refer to our last episode. Get those episode Nazi to donuts out. out of here! <laughs> right? Yelled out of my right. office. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Um, but yeah, so let's also talk a little bit more about engaging students because we touched a lot on the games. But I think mm-hmm. you're right. We do need to talk about that. And the one thing I like to do to engage my students is get them to work in different groups. So in my classes, I've noticed they always tend to sit by the same person. Yeah. I don't think they have, they might have assigned seats here. I'm not really sure. Um, but I always try to mix the groups up for a couple of reasons. One, it's always important to speak with other people because they're going to have different vocabularies, different accents, um, things like that. So one, I think the di- diversity of that is really helpful for students Two. The levels are always different, right? So, so if if you're a weaker language student and you sit by someone who's really advanced, you you don't have to do as much legwork. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where whereas if you Trust put me, together I've been in many sometimes it's, where I put myself in those situations where I don't have to do as much legwork. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. And so I think it's good. Hey, smartest person of the class. When, when you mix head. it up, 
You know, you yeah. should be sometimes have two advanced students working together, sometimes mm-hmm. two weak students, sometimes one advanced, one weak, two middles, whatever. Um, but that's really good. And another way I try to engage my students is occasionally if I can see that there's kind of a lull in the classroom or they look bored. Sometimes I'll ask like a really random question. Sometimes it's not related to the topic. Um, the other day, um, the Do you students, have any go tos? I mean, I mean, one of them is at least on Thursday or Friday. I think it was Thursday. I could tell a couple of the students were daydreaming. And so what did I ask them? I was like, I think I asked them like, oh, are you guys daydreaming about like um, guys daydreaming about the, the, you know, your meal this weekend or, or the party tomorrow night or something and just something to kind of snap them out of it. You know, mm-hmm. um, that's usually a good way to do it. I don't have any go to's. Maybe I should come up with some, some good yeah. go to random questions. Yeah. Um, Quick. What's the uh, capital of... B- B- Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Um, do you have any games that you've uh that you've tried that you've attempted that you either realized were in the wrong age or, or like that you've had to abandon because either they they're like this is too y- like too easy or too hard or it's like dumb, just dumb. Um, You're like this doesn't work in the way I was hoping it was. This is a I mean, dumb game. I, I mean if it doesn't work the way I I want it to, I just end it. I just, you know, finish it. Um, so that's you. That Is hasn't that really been a problem. To be like, never mind. We're not going to do that. Something else. N- do you not? Re- not really. I think a part of growing as a teacher is uh, trying out new things. So no, mm-hmm. I think it's a part of the profession. I think it's also something that you shouldn't be afraid of because it will happen. And sometimes I'll play a game with students, like the vocabulary race. In my first class, it's a big hit, and then in my second class, they're like slowly walking up to the board, like ugh. Mm. All right, I guess I'll write like, a word. What? <laughs> right, and you expect it to be a hit when they're coming into. They're like, oh, they're gonna love this. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the first so class that, was loving it. <laughs> that sometimes happens, but there, there are also ways you can change that maybe to get them more into it. So mm. if if they're walking up to the board really slow and they're not too into it, what I might do is I might like stop them and be like, all right, now what we're going to do is um, for a vocabulary race, you have to run up to the board, write one letter of a word. Then your classmate has to run up and finish, like write one more letter. So you guys have to try to guess what the word is your your the first person was thinking. So mm-hmm. if you did travel and you wrote A, right? Then maybe they go right. up and they write U. Mm-hmm. Then they write S. You know, they could be writing Austria, Australia, whatever. And so Austin, so Texas. Austin, Texas. Exactly. See, so um oh, oh God. <laughs> so 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 there's a lot of different ways I think you can change the games that will then get the students more into it. But thankfully, I've been really lucky. They usually participate. They usually have a lot of fun. Um, And the other thing too, just getting students engaged, is sometimes you have to to do that, where you have to realize, oh, this activity isn't working, this game isn't working. Um, Be quick on your feet. I don't think any teacher should be 100% married to their lesson plan. Um, Right. And some of the best lessons I've had, to be honest, I didn't even really plan that much. Like I knew what my objectives were, what I wanted the students to be able to do by the end of the lesson. Um, but sometimes it's exciting to go in the classroom and see where it goes. I'm not saying think, you should do that all the time, but I have I think a, they call that a dead, po- dead poet society style. That's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Loosen your, your necktie and just say, F it. Exactly. <laughs> Stand on the desk, recite some poetry. <laughs> exactly. These kids are going to listen to me. That's right. <laughs> but I think that the last thing that, that I try to do to get students engaged is really, I guess, two things. Is really be interested in what they're saying mm-hmm. and really listen to it. And two is um, know what your students are interested in and incorporate those interests into it, right? So I've had some students who are into Breaking Bad. So I would occasionally, you know, make a Breaking Bad reference, right? Or I've had students that are into basketball. So... You know, maybe when we're starting class, I might be like, oh, did you see, you know, this game yesterday or whatever. And I think even those little things go a long way and break the ice a little bit for your students, especially if you are teaching a foreign language. I think it's important to use the language right when you walk into the classroom. Don't wait five minutes while you're trying to get the board ready or your computer ready, but walk into the classroom and start talking and have them talk to you and with you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be ready to go. That's right. You were ready to go to a concert yesterday. I was, and it was a fantastic concert. Um, and the concert was by Andrea Triana, who is based, I believe, out of London. 
Um, and uh, that is our song of the pod for today. And the mm-hmm. song is called Woman, and it's coming off of her new album, uh, which is called Life in Color, spelled the British way, of course, C-O-L-O-U-R. Um, and, Never heard uh, of it. <laughs> and so... <laughs> And so, yeah, so we went to this concert. I didn't really know what to expect. I had no idea what style of music this would be, but they mm-hmm. rocked it, and they played this song, and that's why I picked this song. I wanted to pick a song they played, and I have to say... Is this your favorite song for, of the night? Um, well, let me put it this way. Okay. This song, I think, got the crowd the most involved because of that little chorus part, um, mm-hmm. she had all the crowd singing. Mm-hmm. And so everyone was singing, and it was really great. Um, Would this be considered like the single uh, off the album? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Actually, kind of ironic. So I have the YouTube page up right now, Jared. Pre-order Life in Color featuring the single Woman Now. Ah, well, there you go. So there, there you go. Um, what are your thoughts on it, Jared? What'd you, what'd you think? Um, see, I, I was. she's good. I like her voice. She's very nice voice. Very nice face. But... Um, my, the song's clearly not for me. Let me start by saying that. But sometimes wait, you're these... not a woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it is for me. Now that I think about it, uh, <laughs> um, I, I, it's just not my style of music in the sense that I I I, I, I always fi- find like in powery stuff, I rolly a little bit. Okay, but that's just my personal style. Like like I don't I don't like to be empowered when I listen to, <laughs> to music. Okay, like that. Uh, but um, I under I can understand why it, it could it can, and will and is a hit probably. Like you know, I'm sure it's going to be even bigger once the album comes out. But like, I, I get it. I definitely get it. But it's like it's just not for me. Let me put it that way. That's fair. Nothing but, wrong uh, with I that. I like her voice, and I, you know, I think I one thing is, I think I missed that you got to experience was her with a band. Oh, for sure. It was probably less production than what you're going to get on the album. Right. And I think that would be really cool to hear, too. For example, yeah, I'm a huge fan of, raw. like... Yeah, I'm a huge mm-hmm. fan of, like, uh, Tiny Desk Concerts. Oh, definitely. And it's cool to see, like, um, like you know, these th- these artists that ha- are known for a lot of production, mm-hmm. uh, you know, actually just, just, uh, just uh, use bands. Right. One of my favorite Tiny Simple Desks bands. is with T-Pain, where he doesn't have auto-tune. I, that's that's definitely one of probably one of one of their biggest ones because everyone was that I remember that was probably one of the first things that got Tiny Desk on my con on my excuse me Tiny Desk on, on radar? my radar mm-hmm. uh, was because uh, everyone was like turns out T Pain can actually sing <laughs> and he has a great voice dude can really he just, sing he just uses auto tune because you know it's the time right and ever and everyone would use that for years after to uh, reference the fact that he could actually sing. Right. Like, there's even a Jay-Z line where he's like, y'all T-painting too much, <laughs> meaning using too much auto-tune. But yeah, yeah and, that, and that was the thing, though, about watching Andrea Triana is she has serious pipes. I loved what she was doing in terms of dynamics. And you're right. Seeing this live gave me a different perspective and experience on the song. Yeah, um, and, and also seeing live, even for, even for musicians that are, that are full bands, mm-hmm. even in the studio... You still get a different appreciation for those people to see how well they can like performing right. isn't performing is a full on workout. Yeah, and it's so an that, art. And it's, it, that's a that's an entirely different talent than playing in a studio almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it, you you give someone a different kind of of appreciation to see that they can perform and that you know it, that they're in, that they're performing powerfully, which is a, a workout. Oh, definitely. Without a doubt. And she had a great stage presence as well. Um, and yeah, um, and I think this song, the other funny thing was too, I would say the, the, the demographic of the crowd at this concert, um, I would say it was maybe a third, if that, guys. The rest were mm-hmm. all women. Mm-hmm. And so I think this was also obviously a big hit with all the ladies in the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, the show was really high energy. She had amazing diam- dynamics and vocal range. Beautiful vibrato, and I think you can, you can definitely see that or, or hear that with the with the studio track as well. Um, yeah. At least I think you can tell she's super talented. And like I mentioned at the top of the show, she even played guitar on one song and bass on another song, and sang. That's even cool. And did I, didn't, I, yeah. I obviously didn't, I didn't I didn't know that part. Right. But um, 
uh, yeah, no, I mean, you can definitely hear a good a good singer or or like through um through studio and rec- and good re- quality recording, mm-hmm. but it definitely just gives another level of appreciation to know that they can do that live as well. Oh, definitely, without because a doubt. like you know, speaking of Mariah Carey, no offense to her because she's obviously a great was a great singer, mm-hmm. but you you hear you see you know the only time you hear about her performances these days. Are when she like her, she can't hear her, like you know. It's just when it's just disasters. There is right. one. I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna shit on Mariah Carey. Uh, this. All right. There is one. This one. No, there's one. It was just hilarious. <laughs> she uh she like couldn't hit one of those high notes. You know, one of those classic high notes. Just makes sense. Right. She's like right. But uh while she while it was hitting it on like the like the the track in the background, she was saying that that album went hit number one on the rec on like the charts. She was like, but it hit like I can't hit that note, but it hit number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's like I love how you're shouting out your, your like your qualifications while you can't hit the notes. It's just funny, but yeah, right. no, it is great to know that they can actually do the live. Oh, it's for sure. So check that out, mm-hmm. "Woman" by An- Andrea Triana, and it will be on our Twitter, Untranslatable One. Yes. Well, Jared, are you ready to review some check? We got to keep up your check so you don't forget it. Yes, yes, yes. Use Pro it so scene? you don't lose it. It's please. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeshni Yedno is another round. Yep, or another one, but yeah. Oh, oh is it one? Yeah, Yedno is one. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Beheshki mm-hmm. Kluk. Uh, is good boy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Do you know what the other drops mean? They are Czech. Mluvete Anglitsky. Uh, Mluvete Anglitsky is do you speak English? Yes. Parada. Is excellent. Very good. Viborni, which is like a northern form of accent, like great or something yeah, like that. Yeah, great. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all I have. Okay. <laughs> what other ones do you remember? Um, I'm trying not to just go through the same ones over again. We okay. get it that I know Dobody Den, which is right. good day. Sure. And Ahoy, which is sup. How, <laughs> how, do, you, how do you say thank you? Djakuyi. Uh, how do you say we thank you? Djakuyi me. Very good. How do you say uh, I would like the bill, please? Zaplati me prosim or uchet prosim. But I would I use a platy. Stick with the zaplati me, yeah. yeah, dude. You I got just, this. I'm impressed. I just like to. I just like to use both of them. But I, I would definitely always use a platy me. But I still want to at least remember the other one. It's good to know. Right. Oh, for sure. Let's see here. Um, do you remember the word for train or train station? S- no. So train is vlak, v l a k vlak. Train vlak. station is nadraji. Not Laji. See that I, that should be kind of easy to remember mm-hmm. because it's similar to uh, Nazdravi, which is cheers. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. You could put those two in, together in your brain if that works for you. Whatever works for you, man. Um, and Nad then Tla- Hlavni, how, wait, how do you say train station again? Say it one more time. Nadraji. Nadraji. Okay. Nadraji. Uh huh. And the word for like main like main train station is Hlavni. Hlavni Nadraji. Hlavni nadraji. Hlavni nadraji. And what's funny is tongue twister. It is. And what's funny is a lot of like random Czech phrases. I I have now learned just from hearing them on public transportation. Right. Like um like right. uh, pristi uh pristi zastavka is like next station because that's or, what you hear on the tram. Or watch your step. Do you know how to say like watch your step or well exit I think right or something like that. Well well um. I think what they say, like, it's like move back or away from the doors or, or something like they say, ukoncheta prosim. When you get mm. on the metro, you hear ukoncheta prosim. Um, like stand clear, I guess it could uh, be some, also. Yeah, something like that. I'll have to ask some of my Czech friends what that actually means. But yeah, then you have... But uh, you know what they're saying. R- yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. Then, uh, like <laughs> I said, Tristi <laughs> Zastavka would be next station. Uh-huh. Um, Vistup na linke uh, would be like, I think, like the... Exit to the connection A, okay. I think, um, or yeah, and then. Um, but what that's else? that's yeah. the practical way that you learn stuff. I mean, that's how exactly. I learned a lot of German too. Was lit like uh, umst- like uh, I'm not, I can't bitte. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Aussteig, Aussteig or like right. Aussteig, and like that's Steigen how like Sie bitte ein. And that's how like a lot of those like words like left and right and stuff like that. Even the simple right. stuff would just get. Uh, drilled into your head even something like umsteigen or aussteigen right it's useful if you live in a country oh, like long enough definitely and it's like that stuff just gets drilled into your head without a doubt without That's a how doubt it works all right jared it's time for some jokes mm. so 
Why did the student throw his watch out of the school window? Because uh, he didn't have any new untranslatables. That's right. No, because he didn't. Uh, because he wanted to see time fly. Mm. He was probably bored and not engaged in the lesson. He clearly didn't listen to this untranslatable episode, or his teacher didn't. My next yeah. one. How did the school janitor die? <laughs> uh, drank ammonia. No, he kicked the bucket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds more like a suicide, <laughs> I'd say, right there, if he's drinking ammonia. Uh, why did the music teacher uh-huh. need a ladder? Uh, to hit the high notes. To reach the high notes, but yeah. Um, why did the teacher need a ladder? Mm, I don't know why. Because they taught at high school. Uh-huh. All right, so those are my corny jokes for today's yeah, those episode. Those were extra corny. Those were full giuses. That's true. That is true. So, Jared, I think it's time that we wrap up our episode with a quote, um, trying to summarize our episode today. And I think the main thing about um, teaching and using games and getting your students engaging is being able to stimulate um, more than one sense, right? So you get them up and moving, you get them talking, you get them tasting, like your example with eating Slipping food. Slipping on gator piss. So I think uh, as a teacher out there, if you want to have fun games and get your students engaged, make sure you get them up and moving, you get them eating, you get them talking, and mm-hmm. hopefully they will be engaged. Get them active. That's right. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. Let's say an active student. Here's an even better one. An active student is an engaged student. Yeah, succinct and to the point. Yep. Parada. There we go. Well, we hope this episode has been helpful for you. Maybe you can take some of these uh, games I use in the language classroom and also games Jared has suggested for me you and betcha. use them at your next little soiree or your ice cream social or your house party. And uh, let us know how that goes at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, slide into our DMs on Twitter, uh, untranslatable1. Also check out our awesome song of the pod this week, um, Woman by Andrea Tayani. And also, don't forget uh, five-star reviews on iTunes or Stitcher. Spread a little love. And lastly, I have to say we are so happy for all of your support and your listenership, if that is a word. If not, it is now. So take a look at our different social media channels. Let us know if you have any untranslatables. Thank you again, Pavlina and Ashley, for providing me with mine this episode. We really appreciate it. And as we say here at the Untranslatable Podcast, Yekuyame. Yekuyame.